the depressing thing is that like nearly a third of people are in energy poverty already. Now, energy po poverty is defined as if more than 10% of your income is spent on energy. And already we're at a third of people. And based on the price increases that are likely coming down the tracks in the next couple of months from all of the big providers, that could re easily rise to close to 50% of people being in energy uh, poverty by the winter time. And I think that's why it's important to keep talking about this particular topic because we, we're, we're in the middle of this cost of living crisis. And sometimes there are so many things coming at us, whether it's the rising price of milk or butter or bread or rice or whatever it might be. But energy is such a fundamental thing. And so, you know, it's, it's important to talk about it now because a lot of people will think, okay, it's summertime and they can take a breath because oh, my gas prices, my gas bill has come in and it hasn't been absolutely astronomical. Mm -hmm. And that's because you're not using that much gas or my electricity bill has come in and it's really low. And that's obviously because you're not using that much electricity. But the reality, as you said, Ron, your winter is coming and it's going to be really harsh. And according to the people at Bonkers, .ie, we might see the cost of heating and lighting our homes and cooking our meals going from around two, 2,200 euros a year to around four and a half thousand euros a year. Now bear in mind that 2,000 euro increase is net which means an awful lot of households will have to earn four grand mm. just to cover the cost of the higher energy charges um, and I, you mentioned the, the, the profits that some of these big companies are making so if you just talk about the likes of Shell and BP and Chevron the big oil producing companies, their profit, profits this year are going to reach, are going to top $50 billion. Mm -hmm. like that's a staggering amount of money. But you bring it even closer to home and Borgash Energy, the, its parent company, Centrica, which is a UK based company, mm -hmm. they announced that their profits over the last year have increased by 74%. And their profits over the first half of this year are around 50 million euro compared to, I think it was 30 something. But their businesses and, and they're, the, you know, they're there to make money. Exactly. But right now, when, as you said, so many people are going into en energy um, poverty. poverty. Isn't there anything that could be done to try and gi give back a little bit to people who are really under so much pressure? Well, I would argue, and I, I, might, be, I might have somewhat left-leaning leaning tendencies, I would argue that maybe they could cut their profits a little bit mm -hmm. and give back some money to the consumer. So let's say if they cut their profits by 25 million, they could give every one of their customers back maybe 70 or 80 euros. Now, 78 or 80 euros isn't going to be a huge amount in the context of a 2,000 euro increase, but mm -hmm. it's better than nothing. Another proposal that's on the table for that, and some politicians are suggesting it, is, is a kind of a windfall tax on all of the big utilities. And like that's something that governments would be loath to do, but it's certainly something that's worth considering. Now, what the government has, has been doing actively, it's been looking at ways that it can offset the rising cost of energy. So we had the 200 euro rebate yeah. that, that, that the government gave back to everybody. Now, there's a problem with that because everybody in the country got the 200 euro yes. rebate. So that means a, a single mother with four kids living in a council house got the 200 euro rebate and so did Bono. Mm -hmm. Now, no yeah. disrespect to Bono, but yeah. he doesn't need the 200 yeah. euro rebate. Yeah. So, like, in fact, the IMF, who an organisation who I don't think we have any great love for in, <laughs> in this country, yes. uh, they have actually, a couple of days ago, they were writing this piece saying that, gov that governments across the world shouldn't be looking at ways to, to cut taxes on fuel and they shouldn't be doing these things because they should be. And, like, you're kind of thinking, what? what? But... And I don't agree with that, but what, what the IMF, another point they were making is they should target their relief measures at the people who need it most. And I think that's what the, our government should be looking at doing. So they, maybe they should increase the, the fuel allowance for mm -hmm. people who are on social welfare, yeah. or maybe they should consider a, a, a bounce for people at, at Christmas time to give them, a, like people on social welfare, to give them another 200 euros or 250 or 300 euros to cover their, their, their energy bills. Because the reality is we're going to be facing into a cold, hard winter. And until the conflict in... Ukraine is is resolved, and hopefully it'll be resolved. Um, you know, th this problem isn't going away. I, I've heard this argument a million times because of what's going on in, in the Ukraine, that energy companies are taking advantage of what's going on there uh, and inflation um, to raise their prices more than they need to. Yeah. Well, you know, I'd say they would deny that flatly, but it's very hard for anybody like you or me to say exactly what's going on. But oddly enough, one of the, one of the, the I was going to say companies, but you can't really call them a company, but the government profits substantially from rising energy costs because the government charges mm. excise duty on petrol and diesel. So if they charge, let's say 20, I'm just to pick a 30%. And if they charge 30% on one euro, well, then they make 30 quid, 30, 30 cent in every euro. Mm -hmm. But if, if the price goes up to two euros, well, then suddenly they're making 60. So the government is actually making more money the higher fuel prices go up. And, you know, 
and I, I actually did put that to Eamon Ryan, the Minister for Transport, not long ago. And, he, and you know, they accept that that's what's happening. And that's when they announced, not because of me, but that's when they announced <laughs> the 200 euro rebate. Um, but so, so, so they're giving money back. But I think the government needs to be much more targeted about what it does. Yeah. So that the people who need it the most... Get it. Because, I mean, to be honest, I can probably afford to pay another 100 quid a month on my energy because I'm in a fortune position that I have a, a good job. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's an awful lot of people who aren't in that That's fortune right. position. And it's not just people we on social welfare. Not at all. Not at all. Mm. not at all. People who are on, on lower wages. And like, don't, don't get me wrong, I, I wouldn't be singing and dancing about having to pay another 100 euros on my energy bills. But I would prefer to see the money going to somebody who really needs it rather than going to people like me who could probably just about get by. Let's talk about ways of saving money. We, we've, we've set the scene now. It, it's, it's frightening. It is frightening, but it's not without hope. Talk to me about the Home Energy Saving Kit. What is oh, it? Well, I love this little kit, and it's a kit that's available. And I was given a, 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 given a kit a, a couple of years back when they were just rolling them out. But they're basically these little energy machine boxes that are available in public libraries around the country. So they're free. You rent them out for a week. And they have all sorts of little gadgets in them that allow you to work out where the energy usage in your house is going. So there's a thing that you can plug in and you can work out, okay, well, how much energy is your kettle using? How much energy is your washing machine using? All of these things. And it'll give you a little metered reading about how much it is. And then they have this little laser gun that allows you to point it at the walls, which is the thing that I got the biggest kick out of, to be honest. <laughs> and you point it at the walls. And depending on, on the colour of the laser, it'll tell you where the energy is seeping out of your house. So it'll okay. say, okay, well, listen, I've got a problem with this wall or uh, all the heat is going out of my house through the so doors. So it's like an insulation kind of a thing? Yeah, or? but it, 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 it does, it, it's not going to give you the insulation, but it'll tell you, okay, well, listen, there's an awful lot of heat going out under the, the, the door of my living room. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, what could you do then? Well, you know, you could put, you know, what, what, one of those... Draft excluders. Draft excluders. Things, yeah. simple things like that. Mm. But there's other measures that people can take. So, for instance, an awful lot of people would have had their attics insulated mm. in the yeah. 70s and 80s. And like, you know, and like, I, I remember my parents doing it and there was that really scratchy yellow yes. stuff. Oh. And like, you'd be crawling around yeah. in your yeah. attic and yeah. be like... Yeah. 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 But, but, you know, most people thought, okay, well, that's that job done. Don't have to worry about that anymore. But the reality is that the insulation materials have come such a long way in the last yeah. 10 or 15 years. And there's a lot of talk about the retrofitting grants and, yes. and, and, and that the government mm -hmm. have on the table. But to be honest, for most people, they're kind of, they're off the table for now because they're still really expensive. And yeah, you could spend 30 grand and you could get a heat pump put into your house and you could get, you know, your house cladded with, with, with kind of special insulation materials. But that's all pricey. But there is mm -hmm. a special grant available for people who want to get their attics insulated. And the government will cover 80% of it. Now, if you can get your attic re-insulated, even if it's already been done, but yeah. it was done 20 years yeah. ago, and you can get it done and the government pays 80% of it, you'd be mad not to do it. Because it so will, how do you apply for that? You can apply through it to the Sustainable Energy uh, website, seai.ie. There'll be details of how you apply for that grant. And it's really straightforward. So that's something that I think people should look at doing today. Yes. Uh, because obviously, if you start doing it in August... Or if you start the process, you might get it set up by September, you might get it set up by yeah. November or whatever it might be. But then you need to make these resolutions as well because an awful lot of the... the and I hate when the responsibility comes back to us. I hate when we say, oh, it's your job to recycle, it's your job to cut, to cut your energy usage because the problems are really happening at a multinational industrial level. Yeah. Mm. But at the same time, there are things that we can do. So it's simple, simple things like, you know, and I remember the old uh, environmentally friendly, like lower the, 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 if you lower your thermostat by one degree, yeah. you know, you, you'll knock 30 or 40 euros off the annual cost of your bills. Or if you ensure that none of your ele uh, electrical products are on standby, you might save another five or 10 euros. Or if you only use your dishwasher when it's full and your washing, mean, if you wash all your clothes at 30 degrees rather than 40 degrees, and all of these little changes, you might say to yourself, well, they're not going to make a blind bit of difference. But it's all about the incremental changes. And believe me, washing your clothes at 30 degrees versus 40 degrees, you're not going to notice any difference. I always do that. I never wash anything at anything other than 30 now. Well, it's probably better for your clothes yeah, for a start. Yeah, Because my missus has always given out to me because I... You well, boiled them. I do. <laughs> yeah. and, and sometimes even I'm looking at them going, oh, Jesus, I've ruined that now. <laughs> but at least they're clean. Yeah, but, yeah. But, you don't, but there's no need to do that. And yeah. the, the, the idea is that you, you, take, you take a look at your energy usage now and you say, okay, what, are there five or ten things that I could do that individually might only be saving me a five or a ten or a fifteen quid, but cumulatively the mm. savings could be kind of two hundred quid. Yeah. And then, as we've spoken about on the show a million times, the big, big, big saving that 750,000 Irish households are still not making is switching energy provider. And the numbers who aren't switching are absolutely staggering. And there's reasons for that. People think, oh, well, sure, they're all the same. There's no yeah. way I could save money. You could knock 30% or even more than 30% off your energy bills by moving from company A to company B. And as I've said on the show before, it's not like 
like switching cornflake provider, or it's not even like switching broadband provider. There's absolutely zero difference in the quality of electricity you get from Electric Ireland, Borgosh Energy, Electricity, Flow Gas, or whatever it might be. So if you can save that money, save it. And as you say, you can do it effortlessly by using the web.